Hello, Mass fans. I am here with a super special guest, Nicole Sharp from FYFD. Nicole, do you want to tell everyone what that stands for? Fuck yeah, fluid dynamics. Yeah, it does. <laughs> so, <laughs> fuck yeah, fluid dynamics. Where did the name come from? Honestly, it's actually from a meme. Uh, I originally started the site on Tumblr, and uh, at the time that I started it, there was this uh, proliferation of blogs with fuck yeah in the name. And they had it for whatever sport you can imagine, whatever uh -huh. fandoms. Uh, and there were things like math and physics too, and I thought, why not fluid dynamics? The way I interpret the name is like, I'm seeing something amazing, and you just, as you're watching it, you're like, Fuck yeah, this is awesome. Yeah. Is that like no, that's that's how I feel about yeah. fluid mechanics. So you know, <laughs> that's that, I wanted other people to get that too. I occasionally yeah. get people who think that it means fuck you, fluid mechanics, <laughs> and I'm just like, no, that's not the attitude we're trying to we're trying to propagate it's, here. No, I, I think it's a great way of capturing that excitement. Actually. Yeah, yeah, no, and and I started the site because I had a lot of enthusiasm for the subject. So why yeah. not? Show that off. So you've been doing this for some number of years, <laughs> shall we say? Yes, that's that's a nice way of putting it. <laughs> I mean, I actually don't know the exact number of years. Uh, so. the, the number is nine. Wow. I've been doing this since okay. 2010, which is like ancient times yeah. in the internet. That's amazing, yeah, yeah. And started out on Tumblr? Yeah, started out on Tumblr. And then? Uh, relatively recently have taken all of everything that was on Tumblr and moved it onto its own self-hosted WordPress site. So that's been a major undertaking. Uh -huh. I <laughs> Moving <can imagine. laughs> 2,000 plus articles wow. <laughs> across okay. platforms. Okay, so 2,000 plus articles yeah. on fluids. Yeah, actually uh, 2,400. <laughs> favorites. Oh, I see, now that's a really hard question when you have so many to choose from. Yeah. But honestly, there, there are a few things that actually still really stand out to me from early on in the blog. Um, one of the very first videos I put up is actually from a, a rocket launch mm -hmm. uh, of the NASA Solar Dynamics Observatory. And it was this you know, relatively normal kind of launch, except that the atmospheric conditions were just right, that as the rocket passes Mach 1, you can actually see the compressive waves in the atmosphere traveling ahead of it. And uh, they, they go through this sort of rainbowy area that's known as a sun dog, um, which is caused by the refraction of the light through all of the ice crystals. And because these pressure waves are passing through, it changes the orientation of the ice crystals, and you suddenly have this rainbowy spot that just disappears. It's super cool. Yeah. And just completely accidental. Like, yeah, completely accidental. And you can hear the crowd noticing it, oh, like wow. in, in the background <laughs> of, of the video, they're just all like, <gasps> <Yeah>. <laughs> So you mentioned the, the one you remember from the beginning with the, with the rocket and everything yeah. else. So are there any other or sort of particular topics that you really like or any other things that stand out to you? <laughs> I mean, when I, mean you, I know it's difficult when there's 2,400. Yeah, yeah. When, there's, when there's 2,400, there's, there's uh, lots of things that you, you end up loving. Um, I always like coming back to the kinds of things that um, go out in the gallery of fluid motion. So mm -hmm. I guess for a little bit of background for those who are not in the field of fluid dynamics, um, we're actually here in Seattle at uh -huh. a meeting yep. <laughs> uh, that is all for fluid dynamicists. Yep. And one of the things that, that has been a part of this meeting for I think close to 40 years now is what's called the Gallery of Fluid Motion. And in that, researchers will create beautiful posters and beautiful videos uh, that are displaying some kind of information about fluid mechanics. Um, but the aesthetics are supposed to be a really important part of it. And so there are a lot of Gallery of Fluid Motion videos and images from the past almost decade that have really been super awesome to me. I mean, there's yeah. things like, um, it, was, it was there that I found out first about the K effect. Do you know this one? I don't, This no. is Okay, so the K <laughs> effect is this weird thing that happens with shear thinning fluids, mm -hmm. where if you have something like shampoo, which um, gets less viscous if you rub it, which is how it lathers up on your hands. Um, yeah. If you drop it from a height and have it form a heap, 
so it kind of is coiling in, in a similar way that honey or something would. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, because of that sheer thinning, it will actually create a little dimple and start slipping. And so the incoming jet will come down and then bounce back up and like shoot these little things around. And it just looks completely crazy. Uh, yeah. You can actually set it up on an on a incline and have one jump to another and like have this oh, little, wow. yeah. <laughs> you usually have to have high speed video to yeah. see it, except if you set up that, that stable set up. Um, but that's something that people will do in, in you know, lots of YouTube videos now. Yeah. But that is a concept that I first learned about from the Gallery of Fluid Motion and that I think started getting publicized out of that kind of thing, yeah. which is pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you mentioned the Gallery of Fluid Motion because that's, yeah. I've been doing interviews here all week, like, yep. like we did two years ago yep. in Denver. <laughs> So actually thinking back to that, so we made many, many videos, which you should totally watch. They're amazing. Yes. Um, looking at mainly based around gallery fluid motion, but we did some other Yeah, we, we, we pulled some people who were doing uh, just sort of regular work yeah. uh, that Anything they that's were presenting. Gonna, I guess grabbed our attention from the yeah. titles in the abstract. So yeah. Cool. So, so uh, if you're wondering how to get on interviews with us, make an interesting title. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so, I think I have a personal favorite for the stuff we did, but I don't want to give okay. it away. I want to know which ones do you mm. remember that you particularly liked. That, <laughs> I was going to say I remember the ones that I edited because well, I watched them over yeah, and over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, oh, that's that's a good question. What do I like best from that series? There there are a whole bunch of things in that that I thought were really fun. Mm. Um, I remember really liking the um, bouncing and, and floating and jetting video when we finally got done with that, with like Dan Harris's work. Yes. Uh, yes, that, yes, yes. That was really cool with the, the idea of things bouncing off of the interface. Uh, that was that was really neat, so and and the like hovercraft thing because that actually called back to something that I I had um, I recently remembered that I wrote about on FYFD where people had discovered that if you had these grooved surfaces uh, that you could float hovercraft in particular directions with the, yes, the yes, yes. chevrons, and I like if you go back uh, several years, there's actually an FYFD entry where I'm like, so if you have a, a, an air table. Like, like an air hockey table, and mm -hmm. you put, instead of a flat puck, one that has the, the grooves and the chevrons on it, which direction will it go? And that was literally what, what was right. the work that was being discussed <laughs> in that interview. So it was like, hey, I got to see how, I got to see these things come back around yeah. from the blog to the video work and, and everything else. So that, that's kind of fun about doing it for so long. <laughs> I really liked the, um, the citrus jets. Oh, yeah, yeah. Those, those slow motion videos of squashing, oh, yeah. like, basically, you, you, you take like a, a citrus root, an orange, you put it in a, a vice grip and then slowly compress it. And yeah. And the jets that shoot. Like, yeah, that, that work from Andrew is, is yes. really cool. It's just. Um, and just the idea of like the fact that you have different um, structural properties to different parts of the peel are part yes. of what makes this happen. And I really love research like that that takes something that's kind of a. a observation that we all know about. Like you all know when you peel an orange that your hands seem to get a lot more gross than is justifiable by the amount of peel that you touch. Yeah. And it's because you have these tiny, like almost microscopic jets going off. I've, I've um, noticed it so much more since we did yeah. that video into I'm like, every time I'm like, oh, I know this is Oh, just that's why. <laughs> yeah. No, you're right, it's so awesome yeah. to actually know the full physics behind mm -hmm what is like, yeah, something that yeah. you're aware of, but now you're like, oh, I know exactly why this is happening. Yeah, like, I think that's one of my favorite things about fluids in general, and just mm -hmm. like, especially doing the blog the way that I do it, because my own background and my particular subject in fluid dynamics has nothing to do with the vast majority of what I write about. Right. And I just love being able to take these things that you may or may not have noticed in your daily lives and just be like, hey, here's this really awesome information about what goes on there. Whether it's like peeling an orange or, oh, geez, what other things? The dandelion one. 
Oh, the dandelion. That was a good oh, one. the dandelion <laughs> one. When when their research paper made out, I uh, came out. I made a follow up video uh, entirely about what's going on in that, and mm -hmm. so I was able to do some some. I, I could show off some of the really cool visuals for that, yes. and you can see the like separated vortex. It's, and, it's oh, it's so, so cool. cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I remember when when we did that interview, we had very little footage to work with, and so yes. I actually took my camera to my local park where we unfortunately had a ton of dandelions. <laughs> and I was like down on my hands yeah. and knees with a macro lens, like trying to focus on this teeny tiny dandelion and then like from off frame blow on it to have oh, wow. some of the <laughs> I didn't know you were actually like, blowing on it to make it. Yeah, I had Brilliant. so many people walking by looking at me like I was a lunatic. <laughs> <laughs> the lens we go to. Yeah. yeah. Right? yeah it's, it's the not so glamorous life of a YouTube yeah. creator. <laughs> so there's one that I've just recorded uh, this year, this week, mm -hmm. um, which is looking at the spreading of pancakes Ooh, in a frying pan as yeah. a viscous liquid. So this was this was um, Jerome Neufeld, who I know from Cambridge, and he did this with his kids. Mm -hmm. So on that abstract for the conference, it actually lists a primary school as an address. Oh my god, for two that's the amazing! They had a rule in their house. They had pancakes every Saturday, and the mm -hmm. rule was that you had to measure the radius and the depth of your pancake before you're allowed to eat it and ah. write it in the diary. And then over gotcha. like a year, they collected all gotcha. this data. And then, um, so were, were they were they doing any kind of um, like rolling the pan to spread things, or just purely here's a stationary pan and I'm dropping on it? I think it was just purely. Stationary okay, so then then it's definitely a different thing than than the one okay. that I saw, because yeah. that one was in part about how to. Um, what kind of rotational motion to make in ah. order to spread like crepe batter, which you want to be across the entire pan and you want it to be very thin. Um, but you have to get it distributed before it starts to solidify on the heated surface. Yes, yes, yes. Um, so yes. That there have been people looking into things like that as well. Yeah, food, food science is a great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I remember but, a couple of years ago there was there were people coming um, coming out of the press releases of this conference doing like the physics of frying rice and mm. finding how important the like the the way that Hong Kong chefs move their wrist is right, and yeah. actually getting <laughs> the crispiness right. I can, yeah, I can totally see it. Yeah, for sure. Um, the, the, the reason I mentioned the pancake one is I'm going to need footage of pancakes being cooked. So yeah, you say nice, you went to nice. the park to blow on dandelions. I'm yeah, gonna, yeah. Unfortunately, how to just make loads of pancakes and... <laughs> so what a, you know, you're, every Saturday you're going to have to I make know, and to film so, yeah. and then eat pancakes. I know, terrible. Yeah. <laughs> so you're doing this for nine years. Yeah. What's, are there any big big future plans? You've just moved across to a new website, <laughs> which I have moved, said, obviously, yeah. I can totally imagine would be quite that, a project. It was, it, that's part of the reason that I haven't been putting out much in the way of video for the last half a year is because yeah. I was spending all of my time doing that. I have a whole bunch of videos uh, kind of in the queue that many of which got filmed during this time, but right. need to actually be edited. Um, some of those are going to be... Yeah. Pretty cool, I uh -huh. think. Um, I also, I really want to write a book. Ooh, that's one of the things I really okay. want to do. That's that's well, kind. Of, I don't can you know not what. Just take all two thousand four hundred <laughs> articles and just kind of be like, here's a book. Here's like the Bible of cool <laughs> fluid dynamics. I mean. Uh, if I wanted to spend the next five years trying to work out all of the rights to the images to be put into print, <laughs> then maybe. Okay. Um, but yeah. that's, that's not uh, quite the book that I have in mind. Um, I guess kind of more of what I have in mind is if, if you go to the bookstore and you, you go to the shelf that's labeled science, yeah. you can find uh, you know, dozens and dozens of books that are about quantum mechanics and, and relativity and cosmology and lots of, lots of subjects in, in modern physics. And, yeah. and occasionally some stuff in kind of like classical mechanics and things like that. But nothing that really kind of sets out fluid dynamics for general audiences in a way oh, that's yeah, really yeah. focused on it. That's so um, I think that's kind of what I would like to do. Do we get a sneak peek of, of what might be in these upcoming videos? Sure, I'll, I'll tell you at least a little bit about okay. uh, what was involved with, with filming them. Uh, so one of them uh, is concerned with geophysics uh, and mm -hmm. was done in partnership with the Spin Lab group at UCLA. Yeah. Um, so we'll be talking about some really cool, um, very affordable ways to simulate geophysical flows just like on your countertop. 
Okay. And, and I have, you know, footage on, on just my phone of doing this kind of thing at home yeah. with Legos and a Lazy Susan, and it's super cool. Um, awesome. You can, like, basically recreate Jupiter on your countertop. <laughs> and who doesn't want to be able wow. to do that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, no, yeah. come on. <laughs> if you could send a message to people working in Fluid Dynamics to be like, I really want something on this topic, or can you do these experiments for me kind of thing, Anything you have in mind, or anything that you'd sort of throw out to people? Hmm. Throw out to the community, as it were. I mean, the funny thing is that I, I feel like they have far more creativity than I do in terms <laughs> of coming up with amazing things. And I, I really feel more like the message should be, let me know about your crazy awesome thing. And, yeah, and fair, you yeah. know, <laughs> take, take pretty pictures and images of it that, and, and video that we can, we can use to yes, describe this kind I'm of thing. Yes, I'm 100% on board with this. Anyone, I think anyone doing awesome science, but you know, because we're fluid dynamicists, anyone yeah. doing fluids related stuff, just videos, images, yeah. document the whole thing. Yep. Because then from our perspective, it's gold. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that makes our lives so much easier. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I mean, on, on that subject though, uh, there was a, a talk earlier today uh, given by uh, Rafsan Rabi from Utah State University. And I went to it not, not expecting this, but he actually started the talk with a shout out to me because I was the one who told their lab about hydrogel beads, which oh, were like okay. key to the research that they were doing. They were, <laughs> they were dropping these hydrogel beads onto a droplet sitting on a super hydrophobic surface and documenting the regimes of like whether that drop would come back up off the surface with the hydrogel bead and everything. And it's super cool stuff. I, um, I interviewed them about it. So yeah, that's, that's, okay, that's awesome. coming. That's like <laughs> awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but apparently I am, I am considered to be in some way responsible for introducing them to the concept of hydrogel beads and how you could do cool stuff with them. A few people have mentioned, when I've sort of said, what was the motivation for the kind of study you're doing? And quite a few of them have mentioned you. <laughs> being like, oh yeah, Nicole said we should like try and listen to this or we should try this. And then like... I get some it. of that sometimes, yeah. you know? I travel to people's labs and um, one of the kind of bizarre things that I never expected by starting to do FYFD is that I made myself an expert not in one very, very specific area mm -hmm. of fluid dynamics, but kind of in the field broadly as a whole. Yeah. And so people will often ask me like, hey, have you seen anything that's similar to this? Mm. And I can pull out connections that they don't necessarily think of because Absolutely. I just have this really broad range of knowledge that yeah. covers 2000 plus articles exactly. about it. So um, it's cool that that's actually like contributing to the research directions that, yeah. that people are taking. Um, but that is definitely a thing that I never anticipated when I started out doing this. Yeah.